Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and I am back. There was pretty relatively large intermission since I last talked to you guys, so we're obviously in a massive battle of Rome. So the reason for me being away is mostly because it was kind of summer, and I was moving, so I'm still in California. I'm actually staying in college for summer study, so I've been busy with that, taking uh, Thermo 2 classes and doing uh, other projects. I'm actually, uh, as you guys, many of you guys know, I'm a mechanical engineer. So what I'm doing partly over the summer is continuing my work on a project for my senior project, which is our participation in the solar decathlon. So I'm working on that. Maybe I'll be able to share that with you. But anyways, I've been busy with those two things. Uh, also, just moving. We moved into a new place from an apartment to a nice house not too far from campus. Uh, and then also just trying to enjoy summer, basically, going to the beach, uh, chilling. I hope you guys had a happy 4th. Uh, that just passed by. I know I did. And so I'm slowly getting back into the YouTube scene, obviously. So I hope um, I can bring back some more content to you. That'll be a variety of different games. Also, as a note, some of you guys were pretty interested to see, you know, where the channel was going. So I'm still going to keep doing these Total War games, obviously the multiplayer you guys really like. Um, and then hopefully try and expand and do multiple Total War games. Of course, you guys have seen me do that lately. I do have a batch of Shogun 2 games I want to bring to you guys. And so that'll be coming in the near future. I also tried my hand at playing some Medieval 2 online. Now it's a little tough, mostly because there aren't that many people playing online. When I do get into games, uh, they're pretty laggy, so I'm still trying to figure out a, a good game to bring to you guys. Um, and then also, the other main part of this channel that kind of sets me apart from the other channels is going to be the historical documentaries. I know that's huge, I know that's something you guys, of course, want to see more of. And that's mostly because, you know, you can get your Total War commentary from a variety of other channels easily. Uh, you know, of course, there's Prince of Macedon, who kind of started off, uh, Heir of Carthage, then you get Diplex HD, who does some coverage, and, uh, and you just get a, a ton of different people who do Total War coverage. They're mostly all, um, and then Lionheart, of course. Um, they're mostly all sort of let's players and some of them do multiplayer. I'm kind of the only one who will do the history So I hope you guys are enjoying that history I like to bring it to you and of course my latest work was that uh, can I documentary which I was extremely proud of But it took a lot out of me. And I was pretty tired working on it uh, afterwards It kind of drew a lot out of me particularly during the school year But uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get back to that and uh, I've compiled a list of battles that I probably want to try and cover in the same sense. So maybe not as in-depth as we were able to go with Kenai, but definitely with the same level of attention and care uh, on various other battles. So I'll probably be covering stuff having to do with Rome. Uh, definitely there's a lot of history we can go from Rome from the early Republic to the, the late Empire. There's a ton of battles we can do. Uh, and hopefully we'll be able to cover a bunch of non-Roman battles as well. Um, perhaps covering the uh, conflicts between Persia and the uh, the whole uh, Greek contingencies around there. So the Greco-Persian Wars, maybe the Peloponnesian Wars. Uh, we can do the Diadocian Wars. We can do a lot of different battles, obviously, that uh, hasn't really been covered in the past. So stay tuned for that in the future. However, first on my agenda of things to cover is going to be the continuation of my Punic War series. Uh, that's the first one that I started. You guys hopefully have heard of that, where I've just been covering the Punic Wars, obviously between uh, Rome and Carthage. And uh, actually, I just want to get some action shots of you guys uh, seeing seeing me take out these uh, annoying Persian, uh, not Persian, Syrian archers here. And here we come with some more barbarians. Uh, but it's cool to see these high armor guys just getting absolutely thrashed by uh, the entirety of my Cretan archers in here. So also, you, just to note, <laughs> we'll continue this tangent, I'm playing as uh, Sparta, so I've been trying a bit more, they're hard to play online, but uh, they're definitely fun to play. But back to what I was talking about, so uh, the Punic Wars series is definitely something that I want to continue. I have been putting together the script for part 4, I've already done parts 1 through 3, Part 4 is going to start off sort of the um, Roman invasion of North Africa with Regulus and then some of the naval engagements that take place and often the disasters that we're going to be seeing taking place um, during that conflict. So I've put together most of the script. I'm continuing to put that together. So uh, stay tuned for that. I think that's where I'm going to be going right now. I want to finish off that series just because it's uh, it's coverage of a war, and I think it makes the most sense to finish that up, uh, particularly given the fact that I kind of cheated and went ahead and jumped to the Second Punic War with the Battle of Cannae. So hopefully, you know, in the future when I do Zama, I'll have sort of the solid backdrop of the First Punic War that will be completed. So that'll give you a bit more reference onto uh, what's been going on. But like I said, I'm putting that together. So that'll be the next historical thing you'll see me coming out with. 
Then, uh, after that, what I'll probably do is try and put together the series of battles, kind of like Kana, like I said, sort of in the nature of how Decisive Battles uh, used to do it on the History Channel, or um, Time Commanders used to cover those battles. I want to focus on a battle, but uh, like you guys have noted, with the History Channel, they don't do that anymore, and then when they used to, someone put it really uh, succinctly that I like. They said, basically what it amounted to is they had historians and they were all competing to see how quickly they could describe the battle um, so each of them would go and provide a more brief and brief description of the battle and then you would basically just see the same um, story of the battle um, repeated over and over again the same reenactors doing little battles and you really didn't get much of the strategy so I hope can I was just an example of what I can do to bring those battles to life and so for example if I were to cover uh, the Battle of Karai, which is going to be the this, another disaster where Rome was fighting against the Persian Empire, and at that point in time, basically, oh my God, that's a lot of spears. Hold on, I just want to see this real quick. This is an absolute massacre of the Carthaginians right here. But uh, yeah, back to the Battle of Karai. That's where Crass is going to is going to meet his end. And so, if I were to cover that battle, obviously I'll f cover the tactics. But wow. Wow. But like I was saying, we've already seen a massacre with Kanai, so it wouldn't make much sense for me to just focus on um, just the brutality of warfare in the way we did with Kanai. So if I'm going to do another Roman massacre and defeat, I'm obviously going to try and change it up. So I think what I would do, for instance, if we cover Karai, would be to cover more the Persian side of things, talk about their military, their politics, their history. And so that's what I'm going to try and do with, with, with these battles, is open it up. Uh, to discussions and sort of allow me to talk about different types of things. Hopefully you guys will enjoy. But again, that's my that's my plan. As for the battle itself going on right here, uh, I've kind of collapsed on the Roman front and given the high armor of Rome's troops, what I've decided to do is push forward with my spears and then anytime the Romans um, sort of charge into me, I'm going to target my Cretans and my Peltas who are all in the back. I'm keeping these guys in reserve and I'm going to position them just to get into the backs of these Roman forces. Holy shit, look at that in the back too. I don't know, <laughs> that's a funny glitch, I don't know how that's balancing. But, uh, yeah. So, again, uh, if I'm going to continue with that sort of history side of things, I, I always want some input from you guys. You can tell, if you go back and watch my first video on the Punic War, uh, it was just really, really bad. Um, I was not going on a script. I had basically notes that I would flip through, so I had a lot of ums and ahs as I was talking about it. The flow wasn't that great. The animation wasn't that great. The recording wasn't that great. The audio quality wasn't that great. So all of the feedback that you guys gave me basically led to the, what I would hope is um, sort of the masterpiece of Can I. So continue to give me feedback on what you'd like to see. Um, I can continue to do graphical work. Maybe if you guys even have your own talents in editing or um, doing various things that I could use in my battles, I would love to have some help from you guys. So hopefully we'll be able to put together a master set of those battles. Um, maybe in an, uh, I can post in the description below sort of the battles that I have in mind. You guys can take a look at that and hopefully give me feedback on your, on your own recommendations. Maybe what you'd like to see or what other ones you think would be cool to see. Anyways, the battle itself here has kind of devolved into these two players. Carthage attempted to fight off the barbarians who charged through the center, so Swaby pushed through the center, crashed into Carthage and Rome. It was kind of a clusterfuck, to be honest, he kind of just threw all his forces together. But what it did is, in order to combat that, basically the Romans tried to collapse on him, Carthage tried to collapse on him. When they did, I was sitting back with the entirety of my sort of missile force, and I just picked them apart in the side. Look at this. This is the bloodbath that ensued, so we were able to knock out a lot of the Carthaginian forces in that instance. Uh, and that's something I like about Rome too, is the fact that if you can position yourself to the point where you're shooting into the backs of forces, uh, their non-shield side, the uh, effects can be devastating. And then in terms of dealing with Rome, I kind of came down with my pikes, charged in with my cavalry, and then had my slingers picking apart his cavalry or various other troops. Um, but mostly it was the um, Swaby and Rome who kind of annihilated each other, and you can see that Swaby's charging in with his berserkers, getting a ton of kills. Macedon is now coming in with some of the citizen and companion cav, um, and then Rome is going to try and retreat and pull back into this nice secluded area that they have there. But uh, I'm not quite going to allow that to happen. I'm charging in with some of my uh, citizen cav. Uh, they were being hotly pursued by Carthage's own companion cav, but I was able to wary these guys out. 
There we go. We're cleaning up this Frank, this <laughs> this Frank, this flank right here, pushing forward. And uh, actually, the, the the scene for this battle is going to be one of the temples, one of the marvels I think you can get. So I love that CA added this. I just wish that battles would have a bit more character them. So what if there was a couple more temples here, and the terrain was a little more um, evened out, but uh, you had some nice ridges that you could hide behind? That's something I'm hoping we're going to see soon, is going to be the enabling of custom-made maps, uh, because then you'll see some of the dedicated multiplayer maps hopefully come into effect, just like in Shogun 2. Those maps are really great for multiplayer. They have a lot of tacticality and balance, even for asymmetric maps, a lot of balance to them, which uh, Rome 2 is lacking, and Rome 2 is definitely lacking in character. So hopefully we'll get to see that soon. Now here we go, the Roman stragglers, almost at Karai, uh, like at Karai, are going to be retreating into the safety of a big box, just like they did at Karai, and so the stragglers are getting picked off a bit, but they made it back, uh, and here sort of we're taking on the role of the Persians, which is mopping them up and then darting in with our own archers. Now the um, main trouble we're going to be dealing with is of course the new box formation, which is the overlapping pikes. There's no way for us to attack that frontally. So what we have to do is we have to use our archers and our skirmishers to try and break this up. However, the opponents do have a pretty good amount of their own uh, ranged units, these Balearic Slingers, who are going to try and neuter our forces. So I'm repositioning my guys, my skirmishers, on the right. I'm going to put them in the massive attack. And what I'm intending is to come in through here and basically hit these spearmen from the side and hopefully from the back, and that'll open up this front, crush those guys, and allow for a charge from the Macedonians. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to try and get around this flank right here, and you can see that Macedon is partly doing that there, and the main objective would be to try and force these skirmishers to attack a different position, but uh, we're being a little bit coy in this respect. We have some of our own slingers here, and you can see the missile exchange going up over the hill. So I was trying to tell him to target rather than targeting these skirmishers. He should probably be targeting the mass of spears because once they're um, the opponent's skirmishers run out of ammo, um, then we're good. We just want to whittle down these spears. And what he's doing particularly wrong is targeting these peltas. These guys are good because they have huge shields so you should not be targeting them. Um, I was trying to tell him to target the, um, at least if he wants to target the enemy um, range units, at least target these guys. They're in a big blob, they're low armor, and they're actually shooting back. Whereas these peltists are just not doing anything, so they're soaking up a majority of the fire. Uh, what I decided to do is I'm, I've am i had it with these guys standing here, getting off shots. So what I'm going to try and do is just send in some of my periodic pikemen. At this point, they're uh, three veterans, see, just because of the number of kills they've gotten. So here they go. It looks like they've got their Zephos out, so they're going to be charging into the flanks. I'm going to force these skirmishers back. There you go, charging into the thick of them. And at least they've been distracted, so they're not going to be um, dealing with me. But I get up basically point blank, pull some spears out of my pocket, and drop them right on these guys. So uh, I'm getting up close. But at this point, this is where they unleash basically all their peltas who are in the mix here. Oh my god, look at these. It's so cool that they actually were able to render those. Uh, that's incredible. All the rocks are still rendered, but yeah, he goes ahead and retreats, and then he has his Peltas, close range, they're just going to tear into my Perioico Pikemen, who don't have very good stats for health. So I decided to just charge them in anyways, keep the distance close, so if at least there's um, some, oh my god, spears coming in, uh, then at least it would do friendly fire, but I, I was routed before I could do that. But it, oh, it bought time for my own guys to move forward, as well as this entire uh, Swaby mass coming in, so they're going to try and charge into the Skirmisher block. Here I'm moving with my skirmishers, and you can see I'm telling them to tackle the entirety of this pikeman group. We're also charging with some compan uh, citizen cav to get those guys wiped out. Um, however, what you're going to see is the swaby player maybe do probably the last thing you want to do against the pike wall, and that's going to be charged right into this. He takes the bait of the retreating skirmishers and runs right into this pike wall. So we'll see how how they deal with that. At least it's an epic sight uh, that you can see. Um, cavalry coming in and then all of my missiles basically going over their heads. Roman infantry in the back are here to provide some stamina and um, hold fastness, I guess you would call it. Anyways, all my um, ranged units are at least... Oh, no, I'm repositioning them because my angle was poor. So I'm going to reposition them on this side. I'm going to try and shoot more into their back. Over on this position, we're going to be countercharging the Numidian Cav. They're going to be forced to peel off over here. I saw that... Um, the box was opening up in the rear, so I'm going to charge in through there. But the main problem is, I don't know what our ally was thinking. 
but he's basically charging his units right into this spear wall. So that's going to mean a lot of death on his part. There's no way he can crack that given the number of spears we have. General unit back here. And this spear wall is holding tight with some more of the Carthaginian archers firing up over them. But look at this Macedonian wall is going to be coming in. They haven't quite dropped their spears, but here we go. Spear on spear. So what I'm going to try and do is even up, even up that fight. So take a look at all my archers. I'm moving them a little bit close. What I'm trying to do is even up this fight as we're going to throw in our own pikes over the mass of bodies. I'm going to try and even up this battle. So it looks like Macedon has the advantage. Um, so he's getting most of the, the, the damage done here. And I'm going to follow this, uh, with this up with the volley. Take a look at that arrow right there. That's going to be the uh, all my projectiles coming in here. So he's starting to pick off a couple of his men. Uh, Romans are going to try and reinforce, but it's not going to be for much. Here we go, me picking off some of the rear ranks. And the barbarians, again, they're just so eager to get in here. They're going to charge in. Uh, not the best move. He's going to charge right past them and basically just die. So if anything... Uh, yeah, it's just, I'll stop it. It's kind of nothing. He's not getting anywhere. But what I did is I moved my Peltas over here, and they just got a devastating uh, fire right into this unit, obliterated them. That's going to allow us to move forward, and then allow us to start collapsing on this front where I have my own pikeman position here. Let's go ahead and watch the back where the, the entirety of the enemy force is kind of, uh, yeah, they're falling apart. I've moved in my pikes here to hold this position. I'm going to start curling around this flank. My own pikes, I put them in pretty deep formation just to hold against uh, the Syracusan forces. Over here, you still have a pretty big mess. This is kind of interesting. <laughs> Not much going on, but that's why we're trying to turn the flanks, and I'm trying to get my peltas to do the damage where and when necessary. So I move them over here to target this main blob. And now I'm pushing forward. Pikes again positioned here. Taking on his units, and then I'm going to continue to throw my Spartans through this position. Royal Spartans are very epic, and then here we go, more of my Peltas, more of my Archers, more of my guys, just all streaming around here, and I'm trying to funnel in the other troops. They're going to form another defensive position here, so a pretty good idea. These are Sam... There's no way those are... Huh, I guess they are Samnite Warriors. Interesting. So they're going to hold back that tide, but I'm going to continue to push forward with my Pikes, and now with all my Peltas and units firing into here, we can kind of watch my Spartans do this. We'll see if they actually got off their volleys, but they're pouring in the fire here. And there's not much our opponents can do. Even the Romans at this point, facing this spear wall, there's no real place for them to commit besides this one place right here where they are making progress against the Barbarians. That's the only place where they are hoping to break through. But uh, we're closing in the noose. And I'm reforming my guys to the back here. And uh, the Macedonians definitely show their superiority uh, when it comes to pikes. Of course, with a little help from my guys from the back, but they, they just absolutely wrecked the Syracusan line. So that just goes to show the utter efficiency of the Thorax pikemen with a couple upgrades thrown on them. And maybe just the uh, the downside of the Syracusan pikes. Here, my royal Spartans seem to be already cheering when faced against the Romans. Romans against Spartans is definitely a, an awesome combat. Um, my own sort of royal Spartans and Spartan hoplites have really good holding uh, potential. So they're good against Romans, but uh, they just can't kill them, essentially. You can hold out for a while and do a long battle, uh, but that kind of fails when the Romans are able to maneuver around you. But in instances like this, where I can just hold them up front and just delay and delay and delay, uh, it's a pretty even trade. But that's going to be it. We kind of collapse that entire front. Uh, so let's end the replay and take a look at some of the stats going on right here. So myself, I deployed almost 3,000 troops. Got a lot of kills. Uh, most of my kills actually came from my uh, ranged units because just how efficiently I targeted them. Uh, and my pikes didn't do that much. Again, they're just meant for holding. We can look at um, Swaby. He did decently. Mostly threw away his <laughs> scout riders. Um, where are the main kills? Yeah, swordmasters at the end who were chewing into that that block of Romans. But mostly, um, he lost his blood sword thrown against the spear wall. Uh, Macedonians did really well. These are the Thorax pikemen who basically chewed into the Syracusan pikemen, so those did well. Uh, companion kind of mopping up the enemy. We can take a, look, take a look at our opponents. They did decently. Mostly it was um, Carthage who just didn't do well. Uh, I would say mostly because he he invested too heavily in some of these uh, elite cavalry who are good 
um, in doing what they do in exchanging with cavalry, but after that they don't serve much purpose. Uh, and then his own sacred band just got wrecked, mostly because those guys can't deal with pikes, just because of the range differential, and then the fact that I threw in all my spears into their backs, so they, they didn't get many kills. Take a look at Rome, he did it a bit better. Standard Eagle Cohort, oh, actually you, usually you see Avocati, he, he put in a lot of Eagle Cohorts, and his Syrian archers were mostly neutered, but uh, his Equitaic Sordinari did well. And here we can see, again, back to Syracuse. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that battle. I didn't get to talk too much about it. It was more of a constant conversational uh, commentary. But uh, again, uh, just as a reminder, leave me feedback on what you want to see from those historical battles. I'll try and get those uh, more of those back to you. Anyways, it feels good to be doing commentary again. See you soon.